from the mainstream Western nations, from the governments, Vietnamese abroad are known to be very hardworking and very successful. Look at the, this community, 40 years. It only takes us 40 years and look at how prosperous this community is. Look at the name, the Vietnamese names, who are valedictorians in schools. You know, same thing in America. If you go to local high schools, chances are the top five students are Asian, and you would find at least one or two out of those top five names are Vietnamese. Vietnamese students are known to be the best students. Asian students are known to be the best students in, in schools. So, and I, I, t I told um, in English about you know, my, my personal story. My kids, when they were young, they had this complex, because they're kids, you know, they wanted to be white. And they, had, they carried this complex because they didn't, they, weren't, they didn't look white. But by the time they get to seventh or eighth grade, then all of a sudden they discover that, hey, being Vietnamese is actually pretty cool. Why? Because their classmates, uh, their friends, fought over uh, for their help, you know, tutoring in math, in physics, or whatever. And then some of the friends would say, well, hey, find your own Asian, you know, get your own Asian. Because it's known that the Vietnamese are very good students in math. So all the, the white kids flock to my, my kids asking for help. So that's when they started to realize that there's something cool to be Vietnamese, you know? And then that's when they start the pride. The pride starts. And then more, the, the more grown up they are, the more they want to understand their roots. And nowadays, I could say with all honesty that all my four kids are very proud of being Vietnamese. Uh, and it's, I don't think it's because we keep telling them that you, know, you have to be proud. No, they find it out themselves by how the mainstream Americans are treating them, how other ethnic groups regard the Vietnamese groups, regard the, the success of Vietnamese. You know, again, um, one quick anecdote, anecdotal uh, incident last year, Bon and uh, Phu Vi arranged uh, for me to meet um, Prime Minister uh, Fraser, uh, God bless his soul. Um, it was last July. And um, so, you know, I, I just came in and we greeted and meet and we, we just talked about various subjects. And then to his surprise and to my surprise, he didn't know much of the fact that, uh, that China has taken over Paracel Island, you know, Lao Chung Huang Sa Chung Sa. So I, I made that point about a Chinese invasion and the um, and Chinese uh, traditional will of wanting to invade other countries and enlarge their uh, domination in the country. And you know what Mr. Fraser said to me? He said, oh, you guys, you're going to kick him out, right? Because you did that in, in many times in your uh, history. So he showed no concern. He basically said, yeah, no sweat. You guys, sooner, sooner or later, you Vietnamese, you're going to kick them out. It is a pride, you know, if, if other foreigners, other people look at us that way, shouldn't we be proud of being Vietnamese? <laughs> Again, when I make the point contrasting the success of the Vietnamese abroad versus, you know, the, the, the thousands of women and children being sold out of Vietnam to be sex slaves and how the 90 million Vietnamese are living in, I think, you know, the, sh the most shameful period of, of our history, then my point is not because the Vietnamese abroad are smarter. No, it's just because we're given freedom. Because we have freedom, because we have opportunities. That's why we flourish. If the 90 million Vietnamese inside Vietnam have the same opportunities like we do, they too would be as successful or more. So that's another reason why we have to help them and we have to put the end to this shameful period in our country, in our history. Thank you. Thank you for your very inspirational speech just then. Um, I would just like to add a little bit um, in relation to what you just said, but also a little bit to what um, um, I don't know, um, when he was saying about uh, partnership. So, as young people um, in you know, Australia, I've done a lot of uh, leadership programs, and a lot of the time there is this 
topic that comes up about being a global citizen, and I think that's extremely important, especially in this day and age when we have, you know, the internet, social network, and we can, can communicate with other young people. Um, it's very important that young Vietnamese come together to help in this fight for freedom, but it's also important for young people in general to come together. So I personally have a lot of white friends or Australian friends, um, and I, when I go to Vietnam um, to visit my family, it's not really a holiday because you go there, but it's usually to visit your family who are not as fortunate to be here. So that's a really shameful thing personally for me to visit my country and not feel like it's a enjoyable trip, but rather one that you kind of have to make, otherwise you can't see your family. So whenever I go, um, I like to ask people a little bit about their lives and you know learn a bit more about the Vietnamese um, that live in Vietnam and what their like how their lives are very different to us. So I'd like to um, also bring that back to uh, Australia and share that those stories with my friends. So, you know, sometimes I tell them about the currency um, issue, like how um, some people work office jobs, but, you know, they can't even afford to pay for even clothes because they're so outrageously priced. And that's not even counting, you know, like food and bills and rent and all that. So, um, I, yeah, I like to bring them back and talk about it with um, my friends here in Australia and just... I think that builds to the um, partnership that we as young Vietnamese can have with young Australians, as well as the Australian government, as well as the government of the world. Um, and I think we're very empowered in doing so. I know that I would like to acknowledge um, a lot of the young Vietnamese in Vietnam who do protest for Dao, um, Hoang Sao and they get um, physically abused, they get arrested. Um, just things that we would not stand up for here in Australia. So because we have a voice, um, it's very important that we share that voice, not in our community, but in the wider community as well, because things happen when people come together and make it happen. So that's my thought. Thank you. Thank you. Great comments. Thank you. Um, Cảm ơn cô. À, nãy giờ mình nói nhiều về những trang đề Việt Nam hồi nãy. À, Phần Anh có nghe cô Duy Ngược Ánh nói về tên á, về tên đặt tên cho con cái. Phần Anh muốn hỏi cô Duy Ngược Ánh một vấn đề hơi riêng tư gia đình chút. Tại vì Phần Anh cũng rất là tin là ba đứa con của Phần Anh cũng là tên Việt Nam thôi, không có tên tiếng Anh. À, mà Phần Anh tin là trong một cái cái tên á, nó, nó nói lên, nó phản ánh lên cái cái truyền thống, cái khu trường của gia đình. Phần Anh tin là như vậy. Um, như Nguyệt Ánh, cái tên rất là đẹp, ánh trăng, nó sáng, nó sôi Thành ra, nó sôi sáng, thành ra nó cũng Thành ra như Nguyệt Ánh, thành ra cô cũng là một hiện tượng cho một nước Việt Nam Thì uh, anh muốn hỏi, bốn cái con của cô có tên là gì Anh Thư Rồi ba đứa tên tên là gì và... <cười> Dạ, cảm ơn chị Khen, anh không có dám nhận những lời khen của chị câu Thường thường những, những người bạn Mỹ họ hay hỏi về tên của anh trước Vâng, Dương Nguyễn Ánh nghĩa là gì? Thì anh cũng giải thích là cái thường thường người Việt Nam chúng tôi đặt tên hay có ý nghĩa lắm Chứ không phải là chỉ có là đặt tên nghe cho nó hay Thành ra thì dụ như họ dự Dương là mặt trời, Nguyệt là mặt trăng và Ánh là ánh sáng Tức là cả ánh sáng của mặt trời và mặt trăng um, Sunshine and moonlight và anh thường hay nói đùa là You can tell that my parents have very high hope You know, high expectations, let's put it that way Thành ra là cha mẹ sinh ra con thì một thì Như là đặt rất là nhiều kỳ vọng vào con Thành ra I'm sorry that I could only, you know I, I did not fulfill all of my, uh, all of their expectations um, But um, it, it's an inspiration, you know, it's, it's a way Uh, it's their message uh, to me, uh, what they expect me to do. Um, cũng xin chia sẻ thêm về cái tên Dương Nguyễn Ánh là tại vì cái dòng họ của Ánh thì ngày xưa ông nội là uh, là quan ở trong chiều và là người dạy thái tử học. Sau này thì đến con, um, đến đời thứ hai và đời thứ ba đều đỗ thiên sĩ hết và cùng làm quan trong một chiều. Thành ra ngày đó thì vua có ban cho một bài thơ để khen tặng dòng họ Dương và ông nội lấy cái bài thơ đó để thành ra tên đệ cho bao nhiêu đời 
um, tự thiệu hồng nghiệp vi bao gia cơ thế thế kỷ mỹ ở phúc khánh dụ chi có nghĩa là mỗi một cái cái bài thơ nó có nghĩa là nhắc nhở con cháu là phải nên uh, dùng những cái tài mà trời cho mình cái trí thông minh và cái tài của mình để phục vụ quốc gia chứ không bao giờ chỉ dùng cái tài đó để mưu những cái lợi ích cho riêng mình thành ra đó là một cái bài học mà đã um, từ ngày còn nhỏ thì cha mẹ đã nhồi vào đầu mình là phải phục vụ quốc gia phải không được ích kỷ nếu mà con may mắn và con được trời cho có thông minh chắc tại vì nói nhiều quá nên <cười> và cái micro mà nó còn chịu nổi đúng không? À, nếu mà trời cho mình được cái trí thông minh hay là những điều kiện vì cha mẹ có điều kiện để giúp cho con học thì phải nhớ là không được ích kỷ mà phải phục vụ à, quốc gia, à, phục vụ à, xã hội. Còn về những đứa con thì chúng nó họ đạn và con cái đầu tên là Đặng Anh Thư rồi à, ba đứa con trai thì tên là Anh Quân, Anh Khoan và Anh Huỳnh. <cười> Trai của tụi anh tên là Tuấn Hy Hy vọng nó sẽ có cái gì đó liên quan đến giống Không dám cảm ơn chị Hello chị Dương người đây I just want to ask you when you refer to the fortress Gong Zun Mo Nai It sounds to me that it's really promoting to competition It's really Americanized to me So it's, it means that not all societies is, is promoting for uh, competition. It's also working in group like the Scandinavian, uh, for instance. So they work in group, they reach the consensus collectively. Um, so what came to me is, is you have to compete against those sets of value. But what to be a great leader is also important, but it's all, also what needs to be a great team member, what needs to be a great follower is also important as well. The other point I also want to make is about when you talk about being a Vietnamese and being proud of being Vietnamese, so it's also important. But I will also question myself is whether we need to also be aware of being a global citizen is also equally important because promoting for nationalism is something is questioning me inside myself. So those are two things I want to ask. Okay, um, as far as the, the Kung Zung Hun Hang I talked about earlier, um, I was talking about the fact that when you first graduated and you uh, enter um, as entry level uh, professionals in, um, in a field, then what help you stand out are those uh, four um, characteristics. Uh, but like I point out, um, you also need to be a team player and when you become leaders, you really have to take care of, you, of the people side um, of things. Um, you know, it's a balancing between the work itself and the relationships among the people uh, doing the work. And that's when our second identity, the Vietnamese identity, will help. Because indeed, the uh, Eastern, um, the Oriental way of doing things uh, is slightly different. We emphasize team, um, uh, teamwork more uh, than individualism. And so there's a balance. And in one way, yes, um, we have to be good team members. On the other hand, in order to um, pro um, get promoted, you have to stand out. There's no choice, you know. Um, and in a Western society, people do not frown at someone um, who is trying to get ahead as long as he or she does it within um, in the interest of the company as well. I want to contribute more, so I'm going to try to improve my skills. I want to acquire new knowledge in order to be more valuable. That's different than saying that I'm gonna you know, uh, backstab the guy next to me so that I could get ahead. So that's when the work ethics uh, part comes in. That's why I, I stress number four, you know, um, the hack, okay? Um, so that's uh, one thing, the, the art part that that I, um, since you mentioned the, um, the teamwork and the, the consensus, you know, I always say that um, in my case, for example, I view myself as a very democratic leader, meaning that uh, I always seek to understand the various perspectives uh, in my team 
and I listen, I want to encourage my employees, the people who work for me or with me, uh, to voice um, their approaches. Um, but in the end, I don't manage by consensus. I make the ultimate decision because I have the authority and the responsibility. Authority and responsibility go hands in hand. If I get the responsibility, I have to make the decision. That's my, uh, and that's the authority. You, can, you cannot manage by consensus because um, it's, it's going to be very inefficient. In the end, somebody has to make a decision. But the point is, you make informed decisions by listening first, by understanding all the various competing approaches or perspectives before you make that decision. Um, so that's the difference between being dictatorial and being democratic. But at the same time, since I'm the one with the responsibility, I have to make that decision. And a lot of people, I would say, that actually the best workers or the best employees in any company, they want to look at leaders who are strong leaders. They don't want to have every decision um, being bogged down because of there are so many conflicting perspectives that nobody can make a decision. Yeah, indecision is bad. You know, indecision is a decision. Um, so. The point is we want to make sure that people feel that they are heard, you know, that, that as a leader we understand all the perspectives. I have considered all of the point of views and now it's my, my job, my responsibility, so I'm going to say we're going to turn left. But yes, before we turn left, I have heard you guys and here's the reason why we can't turn right. Here's the reason why we can't go straight. Okay. Um, another way to build that consensus so that there's no a lot to uh, minimize conflicting um, um, point of views in, in a team is again the leader's job is to set the vision. The thing is if we if everybody in the team understands and agree on what the common uh, goal is, you know, here's here's the destination. You know, as a leader, I get up on the top, top of a tree, I look around the forest and I say, you know, there's a fire here, there's a group fighting here, so if we want to get out of this forest, we have to head this way. That's the job of a leader. And then the job of the manager is saying, okay, now that I'm saying that we have to go this way, uh, in my estimate, it's going to take us three days. So, um, okay, who's going to be on the first team? Do we have enough water? Do we have enough supplies? Do we have enough food? That's the job of the manager. But all team members need to understand, that, yes, we are going this way. And so now we work together to make that happen. So the common goal is very important. The common vision is important. Once we, as leader, we have to be the one who articulate that. Then all team members will understand how, what they need to do in their little part to contribute to that goal. And another point about democracy, <laughs> Another point about leadership is <laughs> we, like I say, we should own the what and let our team members own the how. That's why you don't micromanage. Own the what meaning, you know, we're going to head south. Okay, so that's the goal. But how do we get there? You give people space to figure it out. That's the difference. Dictatorial uh, leadership or uh, micromanaging is when I also tell you how to do it. And especially what they call knowledge workers, people who have degrees, you know, when we're talking with, about white collar job, right? Professions, uh, like engineering or technical job or whatever. The workers are very knowledgeable. So everyone needs to have their own space, no matter how small or big that is. You give people their own space but you give them the boundary so they know when they have to report, when they have to ask permission, when they have to inform. But the rest of the time, they're on autopilot. They have their own space, as long as they understand how that little space of them fit in the big picture. So that's the, the way to lead democratically. Chúng ta còn khoảng chừng 20 phút nữa là chúng ta tới 4 giờ. Ở dưới đây, Phương Vy có 3 câu hỏi. À, trước khi Phương Vy đưa câu hỏi kế tiếp, Chú Thọ muốn thêm Thêm với câu trả Tại vì có anh, 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 anh có, có cái phần 2 của cái câu hỏi là cái phần uh, Global uh, Citizenship. Oh, yeah. right. um, mình, cái đó là một cái ước mơ của nhân loại. Um, nhưng mà ước mơ là một điều thực tế, một cái điều khác. Um, tôi vẫn còn nhớ uh, John Lennon, Imagination, remember that? Yeah, uh, uh, boundless, uh, uh, borderless. 
À, cái đó là một cái điều mà nhân loại mong ước rằng mình mọi người sống hòa đồng, à, một cái thế giới đại đồng, à, không ai ghét ai, không ai giết nhau, không có violation, không có no no aggression. Um, but that's the dream. Okay, everybody has the right to dream. Uh, I have the same dream. Uh, but uh, um, we have to worry about what's happening now, the current need, the near future of our family and our community. And, and those need, um, the thing that we have been addressing uh, is that urgent need and the current need. Um, and then maybe someday uh, we, we, have, we will achieve our dream. Uh, but I don't see that it's happening anytime soon. Maybe a thousand years, maybe not. Okay, thank you. Cảm ơn Chúa. Mình có một câu hỏi dưới đây của một bạn. Xin bạn đặt câu hỏi với cô Dương Nguyễn Ánh. Cảm ơn Chúa. 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 Cảm ơn thì em còn sang nữa đây, giờ cũng phải có em còn có bạn, còn em Vietnamese Australian, giờ you know my cousins are also born here, giờ cũng phải em còn cái nói tiếng gì em làm lắm nhưng mà không nói được, giờ thì chỉ sợ. Thì mà em cũng thấy em bạn về cứ còn em không biết tại sao nhưng mà thường thường ở nhà nó không có nói tiếng gì với bà má nó giống như Maybe because they like to be westernized, or the fact that they think you know Vietnam's backward looking or something, or the fact that they were born here. So young Kamun Hiu, young Dai Sa, cứ dính đó đi. Young Cô Thế, young identity, young Mông Ngữ là young Sa. Yeah. My personal view, um, indeed, it's highly desirable um, that the Viet youth um, born abroad uh, would be proficient in Vietnamese. You know, it's ideal. You know, that that's highly desirable uh, for two practical reasons, even to better communicate with uh, older generations in your family, and also to uh, be able to. Let's say, if you want to understand more about your heritage, a lot of books uh, are written in Vietnamese. Um, so if you don't speak or read or write Vietnamese well, it's a barrier. Uh, it's harder to uh, find your roots and understand more about your heritage without knowing Vietnamese. However, um, to me, um, language is just a means to express our thoughts uh, and to bring out what's inside of us. Um, so do not be ashamed or embarrassed that, that you can't speak Vietnamese well. You know, because again, it's only a means. What inside you? is what counts, right? Again, uh, going back to my uh, point earlier that I would like to present to all of you for consideration, the model of the Jews. How many Jews actually speak Hebrew? I don't know whether there's a large community here in Australia, but in America, there's many, there are many large uh, Jewish communities. You know, they live together uh, in a community, meaning that you, know, you go to a certain section in Maryland, for example, you know that um, you know, all the houses, the people, uh, the, all the houses owned in that area are by Jews. But if you speak to them, 90% of them don't speak Hebrew, okay? But they still retain the essence of being Jews and they're still advocating very effectively for the people living inside of Israel. So, uh, language is great, but it's not the only um, or the utmost requirement uh, in order for us to retain our identity or our heritage. Uh, hello, chào cô. Uh, đây là lần đầu tiên cô đi uh, như vậy trong vòng uh, lâu năm rồi. Yeah. I'm a businessman. Uh, every question here, propose, dreaming, wishing, and uh, achieving to a goal. But I have a one question, which is maybe two. I'm a straightforward guy. Uh, I love my country. First, Trường Sa, Trường uh, Hoàng Sa, Trường Sa. Everyone here crying, complaining, oh, nó lấy đạo của mình, nó chiếm nước của mình. 
mình phải cần mấy mình mình phải để như đó nó gấu xe với nó mình phải uốn éo với Trung Quốc để nó khỏi đại hỏi đánh mình yeah. I always heard about that on the newspaper on the internet but cái cái câu trả lời ở đây nó rất là là, là con nghĩ là nó có thể làm được à, 